Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our remote writing workshop. Today, we're talking about the submission process and getting it right. So whether you're submitting to a hybrid publisher like Greenleaf or a traditional publisher, you want to catch someone's eye and interest when submitting your proposal or your manuscript. Publishers and literary agents receive thousands of submissions every year, so you must know how to stand out from the crowd if you want to find success. Today, we're going to talk about what you need to know about the submission process in order to get it right. So first, let's start with the, let's start with the basics. How does the submission process work? Well, it depends. If you have your site set on a traditional publisher, uh, it's ideal to get a literary agent first because most of the traditional publishing houses don't accept unsolicited manuscripts directly from authors. So instead, they buy, buy manuscripts from respected agents that represent writers. So this is because publishers, uh, this way they can really get the cream of the crop. So literary agents are the gatekeepers, so to speak. So if you want to publish with a traditional house, if that's your goal, you'll want to seek out a good agent that has solid relationships with editors at publishing houses. Now, if you're seeking a hybrid publisher, then you get to skip the literary agent middleman or woman and go straight to impressing the publishing house. And you can submit directly to the hybrid publisher. But regardless of the type of publisher you're seeking, you'll want to present yourself and your work in the best way possible, obviously, so that you can hopefully earn a spot on their list. Now, most publishers have submission or acquisition meetings each week to discuss what they've received from aspiring writers. And those in charge of submissions will present the manuscripts to the rest of the, com of the company that they think hold the most promise. So others in the submission meetings usually include members from marketing, publicity, sales, editorial, and this way everyone can bring in their expertise and viewpoints to the table. So everybody gets to chime in. Definitely, definitely. And there are, you know, key factors to consider when, you know, reviewing said manuscripts, you know, quality, what is the editorial like, sales potential, things like that. So a lot of factors go into making those calls based on what the publishers receive. Definitely. And it's always important to remember that as a writer, what your publisher or the agent is going to be looking for. It's not just the writing. There's so many different things involved. Definitely. What are some of the most important things that a writer should focus on when submitting to an agent or a publishing house? Well, obviously you want to include the basic facts about you and your work, your contact information, make sure that's correct, working book title, subtitle, genre, and the word count. Mm -hmm. And whether you're drafting a query letter to an agent, and that can be another video where we focus on the query letter, or just a book description for a publisher, the main focus, you want to sell yourself and your book in a unique way. So no matter the publishing scenario you envision, you will definitely want to write a succinct, interesting book description. It's around 100, 150 words, uh, 200 probably on the high end. And yes, you need to sell your book in about 150 words and explain why it's different than every other book out there or why you are as the author or ideally both. And you always wanna keep in mind that if an agent or publisher's curiosity isn't piqued by the first few sentences of your description, they're probably never even gonna to get to the meat of the manuscript to see how great it is. It's frustrating, but it's true because they receive so many submissions that sadly they just don't have the time to read all of them or even a majority of them. So that's why it's really important to attract the attention and show how your book is different than everything else out there. Um, on that note, a way to do that, it's nice to include a comparison title or maybe two uh, that are similar to yours and then show how your book is a little bit different than those. Uh, you don't want to pick a huge bestseller, you know, compare yourself to Harry Potter or a completely obscure title either. Pick something mid-range. Um, and again, ideally, you should also, once you have your longer book description, it's also a good idea to craft a few short sentences, what's often called an elevator pitch that shows the hook of your work and how it's unique. Uh, for example, I wrote down a concept hook for Jeff Lindsay's Darkly Dreaming Dexter, which is what Dexter, uh, the show was based on. Uh, so you could write, meet Dexter Morgan, a polite wolf in sheep's clothing. He's handsome and charming, but something in his past has made him abide by a different set of rules. He's a serial killer whose one golden rule makes him immensely likable. He only kills bad people. So you only have a few sentences, but this clearly explains how the novel stands out from the pack and sparks interest. 
So you should always have this very short pitch ready to write or say aloud whenever you're asked about your book. You never know when you're going to run into someone who says, what's your book about? And you want to be ready. You want to have your selling points and what makes it unique. Definitely. I also do want to include when you're pitching um, platform is very important. So we've talked about this in other videos, even if you're writing fiction, um, an author platform is extremely important, especially to book sales. Um, and so definitely showcase in your pitch, you know, where you're going to be promoting the book, you know, how you're going to market the book. Of course, you're going to have marketing and promotional support, but if you have those general thoughts and you've begun thinking about how you're going to market your book and what kind of platform you have, and if you've already started working on said platform, that's key as well. That leads us into what we're going to talk about next. Perfect. Perfect segue. <laughs> Is there a difference between submitting fiction and nonfiction? Absolutely. Um, when you submit nonfiction, you can submit a book proposal, which, and a book proposal is, it basically argues why your book idea is saleable, why it's marketable. And it's a business plan for your book that will persuade ideally an agent or publisher to take on your project. So with nonfiction, instead of writing the entire book and then trying to interest an agent or publishing house, which is how it usually works with novels, you can write the nonfiction proposal first. And with this proposal, you're trying to convince the publisher that readers will spend 20, $25 or more on your book. Now in nonfiction, presenting your platform when you submit your proposal or manuscript is incredibly important. It is with fiction, but definitely with nonfiction. Because as we've discussed before in some of our videos, a platform, that's the existing base of people who have a built-in interest in your message and who also see you as an authority in your field. So your platform shows the agent or publisher that your book will be marketable and have a built-in base of readers. A uh, platform can include things related to your book topic or expertise that you've accomplished, such as speaking engagements, articles or blogs, any previous books you've written, really anything you've written that's relatable, uh, any consulting or teaching you've done. And overall in nonfiction, your background, you want it to convey authority and instill confidence in the reader. So really highlight your credibility when you submit your nonfiction proposal. And remember that especially for genres such as personal development, self-help, parenting, health, business, you're selling your book based on the marketability of your expertise, your platform, and your concepts. So always keep that in mind. Definitely, definitely. And if you're newer to creating a platform before you start pitching your book, build up that platform before you even approach publishers, especially in your, if you're in the nonfiction space, because that is a huge selling point on whether or not a publisher will be interested or not. Um, your platform is very important and you know, uh, your marketability to your audience. And we want to see, you know, if you're already do you have an engaged audience? Even if you have a smaller following, you know, that that's still fine too, but make sure to even build that up and make it so you're you're trying to build that platform, you know, before you pitch a publisher is definitely some. Right. You definitely don't want to start thinking about that as we've said many times before, mm -hmm. right when you're beginning the submission process. It's much exactly. too Exactly. Exactly. Definitely. So what are some of the most important things to remember when submitting? Well, something really small, but happens all the time. Make sure you're spelling the names of the agent, editor, or your publisher correctly. It happens so many times. A simple misspelling or addressing someone as Mr. when it's a woman can really turn off someone that you're trying to reach. So really know, make sure you're spelling it right, make sure everything is on target. Um, also know who publishes or represents your genre so you're not wasting anyone's time. I mean, if you're writing non uh, science fiction, excuse me, or something like that, don't, you know, send it to an agent who only reps romance because it's pointless. Um, and a way you can do this is you can hop on a website such as agentquery.com is a great place to look because you can search out agents by the genres they represent. And so that's a wonderful way to narrow down your list and find out uh, who you want to send your project to. Now, if you're seeking a literary agent, again, uh, going on agent query is great, but do even more research because a great way to start out is to look 
at the books in your genre that you admire or books that are successful and find out who their agents are. And that'll at least be a good starting point. You can even look in the inside the acknowledgements of books and find out who is representing that author. You know, and it's a great way to start because they're probably a really strong agent. Um, you also want to spend a lot of time on your query letter or submission form because this is your chance to make an impression. You're not going to get a second shot. If you don't do a good job, you can't come back the next day and go, oh, wait, 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 wait. It's done. It's over with. So you really want to take the time to make sure your submission is the best it can be. And also something to remember, this business is so subjective. So really, you it's hard to take rejection, um, but you have to learn to do it. However, if you get consistent negative feedback, you know, consider reworking your submission or manuscript, you know, but if it's just here or there, you're a getting a form rejection, you know, blow it off, keep moving forward, it's gonna happen. And I think the most important thing to remember, as we've talked about, is you're selling yourself and your book during the submission process. So your main goal is to convince an agent or publisher that large numbers of readers will want to pay their hard earned money for your book. So you really want to get out there and shine. Something I definitely also want to note is, uh, you know, this is the time to be a little bit promotional, be a little bit self-promotional. Why would you be, a, you know, you are pitching yourselves and there are a lot of people you are competing with. So make sure you, to give it all you got, you know, make sure you are letting us know why we should publish this book. You know, is there a need in the market? You know, do you have a consistent and engaged following. Maybe you don't have 10,000 followers, but maybe your engagement rate is super high. You get a ton of comments, a ton of engagements on your, you know, your mailing list. It doesn't even have to be social media, but what if you have a really engaged mailing list or, you know, traffic to your website is consistently high? You know, you really want to include tidbits of things like that. Yeah, yeah. find your angle. And this is an this is an ad for you and for your book. So look at it that way. Definitely. All right, Erin, what is our assignment for this week? So your assignment is to write a short pitch, whether it's something you've completed or something you want to complete. Uh, if you had to summarize your nonfiction project or novel in just a few sentences, make it sound unique, saleable, how would you do it? So write it first and then edit it, then re-edit it, then rewrite it. And remember, sell yourself and the book as something fresh and new. You're not just providing the plot or the basics. You're selling it. So you make, you want to make someone really want to buy it. That's the Remember, goal. supply and demand, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, this was great, Erin. Thank you again so much for your wonderful insight. So that wraps up this week's remote writing workshop, everybody. It was so great seeing everybody again. Make sure you guys are engaging with us, letting us know what kind of content you want to see on these videos. We are here to help. So make sure you're commenting, DMing us on Instagram, anything you'd like to see, and we will see you guys next time.